Hi everybody, I'm Stephanie from Rosal Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC. We have a spinning video today. We are going to make, we're gonna spin up one ounce of spiral candy cane yarn. This is an art yarn. So we just start out, we have our roll eggs. They're measured out for an ounce. We have three ounces in December's Spinner Surprise box that we can spin up so we can make three skeins of spiral ply candy cane yarn. And this is just how we're gonna do it. So I just started out spinning quite consistent there, but I'm gonna put, I'm gonna start doing a little bit of thick and thin. Bumps, a little bit of lumps. We don't want this to be completely thin. We don't want it to be consistent. We want this to have some thick parts. We want it to have some thin parts. Now this is not gonna be a super thick, um, super thick and super thin spiral ply. The whole thing is going to be more, cons uh, more consistently thin. So do you see how I kind of pull back and I've got some thick parts, some thin parts, now you don't want to underspin under this yarn. When we're making this yarn, it is a bit, I would say it was a bit better to spin it, to overspin it than it is to underspin it. And what I mean by that is it's better to add a little bit too much twist than not enough twist. Because if you add a little bit too much twist, the yarn isn't gonna fall apart. If you don't add enough twist, the yarn has a potential to fall apart when we go back and we uh, spiral ply this yarn. And we don't want this to fall apart. So this ounce will spin up incredibly fast because some parts are thick and some parts are thinner. But again, nothing super dramatic. We're not doing super huge differences between the, um, the plying of the yarn. So between the, I'm sorry, between the spinning of the yarn. So we're not doing super, super, super thick piece and a super, super thin piece. We are keeping this um, relatively consistent. It's been a long time since I have spun a thick and thin yarn. As you guys know, we've been really concentrating heavily on spinning consistent yarn. Now there's a different way you can spin this. There's a lot of ways you can spin this candy cane yarn. If you want to, you can spin three separate singles, spin them all consistent and then ply it together. You can do that. Um, but I like to uh, have that additional twist because when you think about candy canes, you know that the dramatic difference of the spiral where you have that super thin piece of thread that you're plying with your thicker single that you spun. It just, to me, it really reminds me much, much more of the spirals in a candy cane than if I were to do uh, three separate singles and ply them together. Piece of paper in there from my office. So. We just keep spinning. Second in there. That is okay. We just pick it out when we see it. That's a pretty thick piece. Kind of thin that out a bit. And we're almost to the end of this row leg. I'm gonna get another piece. So when I'm grabbing the pieces, it's kind of at random. Um, I'm definitely trying to not grab a piece that has a lot of white in it and then another piece that has a lot of white in it. 
or a piece that has a lot of red in it and then another roll egg, you know, that has another a lot of red in it because I do want there to be a I do want there to be some difference. So I want there to I want it to be like white, a section of white that's predominantly white and a section that's predominantly uh, a bit more red in there. So I do want um, I do want that dramatic change in the yarn. I forgot how fun this was to do this. It spins up so fast compared to when you when you're spinning yarn like this. It spins up so fast compared to when you're spinning a thin uh, single and you're trying to spin it consistently. Because because this we're not paying as much attention to correcting any lumps and bumps. We want those thinner sections and those thicker sections. We want that variety because it makes an interesting yarn. So when we ply it with the thread that we're, we've chosen that comes with your December Spinner Surprise Kit, when we ply it, let's see how many of these we have left. We're gonna do this smaller piece of red. But when we ply this, the thread that we use to ply it is a darker red. And so that's, you know, it really, it's not just two different colors, this yarn. This yarn has the depth of just a, a variety of colors, which is super cool. All right, let's take a look here. If we do this, if we do this, if we do this, if we do this, and this, then we have to do this. So there we go. So I'm gonna put one more red in here. And we definitely need to pay attention to our tension. Some of this red is bright red. Some of this red is a darker red. Right now I have a section with a brighter red in it. The next piece, the next roll egg that I will use is going to be an all white Angora roll egg because I want, I want that to be white, clearly white, then clearly a bit more red in there, so that'll be nice and fun. This yarn is really great. If you ply this up, you literally can just use this, keep it as a skein, um, and then when you undo the skein, when it's a loop of yarn, you can literally just use this as like a decorative necklace or a decorative scarf as it is which is kind of cool. So if you wanted to, before you even use the yarn, that's how you can use it. You can keep it in its yarn form. I have the, it's very tempting for me when I'm spinning like this. It's very tempting to just, um, all of a sudden start spinning it all consistently, all one width. So I have to pay a little bit of attention here to that urge. This is a sort of yarn, if you can't spin yarn super consistently yet, this is a wonderful type of yarn. If you, if you already spin things that are a little bit thick and a little bit thin, um, this is a great yarn to A great yarn too. Just kind of mixing those up to spin up. If you naturally uh, don't have the skills uh, perfected yet for spinning completely thick, or uh, I'm sorry, completely consistent yarn. So this is one roll leg of all Angora. It feels really, really soft on my hands. There's really nothing like Angora. You know, I've been spinning a gray alpaca for quite a while because I'm making yarn to make a blanket. However, you know, even when I feel this, when I switch to this, you really can tell just the fineness 
of the Sangora. Just beautiful. It feels wonderful. It feels wonderful to use this. And rabbits are, you know, they're nice and small and compact and they're very, uh, you know, they don't bark. They're quite quiet animals. They can live they don't need acres upon acres to be happy, healthy. They can live in a bit smaller land than sheep, for example. Of course, your rabbits can live in the house with you too. Right now we have all of our rabbits that we have in the house. It's just kind of fun that way. All right. It looks like we have four, after this roll egg, four roll eggs left. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna use two bobbins. So the first bobbin we're obviously using right now where we put this, this uh, single on it. But the second bobbin is an empty bobbin. So we're gonna, once we're done with this, we are going to take that, this full bobbin and we're going to move it onto the Lazy Kate and we're going to take the thread, put the new bobbin on, and we're going to start spiral applying the single and the thread onto the empty bobbin. You don't have to do it that way. If you only have one bobbin, that's okay too, because all you have to do is use a ball winder and unwind the yarn from your one, your single bobbin, and then you can ply the yarn back onto that bobbin you just emptied with the single of thread. When I look at this, I think, um, when I look at this fiber, I think, automatically like this makes if you have gift packages with uh, Christmas packages or holiday packages and you want something decorative like a decorative um, ribbon on the outside you could use this as instead as a decorative yarn on the outside of your package this is pretty fun to, to hang ornaments up it's just pretty fun in general to make really anything with. So if you want to make a Christmas stocking or if you want to, if you have a candy cane pattern, this is perfect to, to use for the yarn. It's just super fun. It makes a really fun hat, makes a really fun headband. There's just so much this yarn is great for. So we're gonna move this a little bit here. In the past, I've made this with Angelina, so I've made it so it was more sparkly. However, um, we're avoiding as much of the plasticky products. This, this past year, we've been purposefully choosing not to use products that are uh, made heavily petroleum based products and it's been enjoyable so definitely getting away from that has has its benefits but also you know sometimes it's just fun to make a super glittery sparkly really bold yarn But that's, of course, not the only way to make a bold yarn. There's many ways to make much more bold yarn. So... After this roll egg right here, we have three. So this is the third to last roll egg in my hand that I'm just joining on. 
And when you're doing when you're doing spiral ply yarns, you really do want to pay closer attention to your joints because when we start plying this with the thread, it it has a tendency to come quite undone. So if I really wanted to even add more twist even than this, I could. You don't want to spin a perfectly twisted, perfectly balanced yarn. You you would prefer it to be a bit over twisted. We've covered that already. So even though this might feel, when you're spinning it, it might feel a bit more um, harsh because it is being spun just a little bit tighter than usual. Again, when we ply it, it really loosens this up. It opens everything up. And so it's just, it becomes much softer again. Definitely need to adjust my tension. Second cut. Ooh, got kind of thin here. That is okay. This looks like a candy cane right away, right by itself. It's a pretty big section. So, one of the reasons why I'm not spinning this super thick and super thin is because I'm using the Ashford Elizabeth II spinning wheel. This only has, uh, the orifice of this where the spun yarn goes through is only so big and there's hooks where, um, where the bobbin is, where the yarn is, is placed on the bobbin. It uses hooks and it's quite difficult to spin a super thick and thin or a, like a really artsy sort of yarn on this wheel. This is not the sort of wheel if you want to spin a super, super thick yarn. It isn't made for that. And this is not where this wheel, uh, that is not where this wheel excels. This wheel excels making consistent yarn. And so this, a little bit of second cuts, this wheel can make a, sp 